Geoscience Australia for a very long time has, has archived um, uh, the US's uh, Landsat data. Uh, and we have uh, built up an archive of routinely collected uh, data over the last 30 years, and it was just sitting there. Uh, the problem is it's really quite difficult to use. Uh, so we established a program called the Australian Geoscience Data Cube program uh, and started to work uh, on the development of software that was that was going to unlock the value of this data. It, it was going to uh, to make it available to everyone. And that's that's where this data cube uh, uh, tagline that the data cube name came along through through that process. So over 30 years, every 16 days, we have a picture uh, of what's happened across the, the entire landscape. You're in a position where you can start to understand uh, what's going on with environmental trends and start to uh, help uh, government agencies, policy agencies, to much better understand what's going on in the landscape and what historically has gone in, uh, on in the landscape. And that puts them in a position where they can make much better uh, decisions about, about their investment in environmental management. Uh, the thing we always knew in developing this software is we're, we're developing it for our purposes, but we're, we're de developing software that is uh, unlocking what is ultimately a global data set. So, so we knew that there was opportunity for collaboration across, uh, across the globe on this. Let's build an open source community, uh, and that's where uh, Open Data Cube was born. When I came into this picture, um, we were seeing what the Australians were doing, and I, I thought it was amazing and outstanding, and they had uh, this new technology that we thought the group of us thought we, we should globalize this. This has to be taken broader and has to be utilized. That's really what kind of spawned this whole group of multiple agencies coming together and saying, let's all uh, come up with this lingo. We'll call it Open Data Cube because we know it's open source. We want to share it with the world and then let's use it. Um, CIOS, we've always thought that you know our job is to increase the use of satellite data around the world. Well, this was ideal for doing that. It, it really broke down the barriers to entry for people that are not used to using satellite data. It made it much easier for them to touch it, to do things with it and create products. And so that's how we got involved. I think it really gets down to open science. It, it gives us the ability to share algorithms, share methods, and to use a common framework so that we can do open science. So when, when Australia comes up with something great like their water observation from space algorithm, WAFS, I can grab that algorithm in, open sci in you know, an open science framework. I can apply it anywhere else in the world because I'm using Open Data Cube and I can easily take their algorithm. And you know something comes out, out of your student competition that you have, well, we could easily put that into the Open Data Cube framework and share that all over the place. I, I just think open science is ultimately where I see the great benefit for all this. We've done quite a bit of research in Australia on uh, on what some of what some of the barriers are uh, to utilization of of this data and and one of those areas is skills, but also as as Brian was saying, if we make all of this stuff open, then the baseline, the point that they're starting at when they're jumping in and they're upskilling um, is is easier we're making it easier for people to start so we're, we're putting them in a position where where frankly they need less skills than they'd otherwise need uh, in order to start their journey with with working with this um with this satellite data it has definitely become a buzzword around the world we've got it touching over a hundred countries in the world half of the world is already doing something related to data cube with their satellite data along comes training opportunities for learning python machine learning projects student competitions i think one of the the big benefits of this has been capacity building and training and bringing the new and young uh engineers into the fold because it's relatively easy to use and they're pretty adept at python so look, one of the great things about having an understanding uh, of decades of uh, environmental trends is that step one is, okay, we can see what happened. Um, step two 
uh, is starting to look forward and and saying, okay, I I can I can see that we're in the middle of a trend and it's similar like uh, similar to something that happened in the past. So so being in a position where we can use this historic data uh, to build a um, a global environmental prediction um, system, like understanding how. Uh, how history can in, in, inform us in terms of what's going to happen next, I think is is the the big thing. And in terms of what that can do for for decision making in in government and in industry, uh, that's just absolutely massive. Uh, being able to better target uh, products and services uh, wherever they come from is is of huge huge value uh, in terms of growing growing the global economy. My vision would be a set of interconnected regional data cubes around the world all using common frameworks so that we can all share things between us so sharing data sharing methods sharing algorithms i don't see any reason why it couldn't happen and it's it's starting to move in that direction having so many people put their minds to how can i use this data to solve real problems in the world um, it's it's just really exciting uh, and making sure that we're feeding those learnings back into the way we behave, uh, the way that we're moving forward with the development of, of data cube technologies uh, and ultimately uh, making making a real impact on the world. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just so excited.